Hello, I'm Ashley Mosalem. Today I'll be talking about health literacy among deaf college students. I work under the Deaf Health Lab. This is my research team. To understand the purpose of this study, it's important to know what health literacy means. It is the capacity to obtain, process, and understand basic health information and services needed to make appropriate health decisions. Health literacy incorporates use of skills such as reading, writing, speaking, listening, and numeracy, but not limited to those. There are other critical skills involved. There is a finding that reveals that deaf ASL users were 6.9 times more likely than hearing non-signing individuals to have inadequate health literacy. For the population in general, it is clear that health literacy has a strong association with health outcomes. It is essential to have equitable and cost-effective health care. Deaf and hard of hearing adults are at risk for health disparities. It's found that they tend to have poor health status and quality of care. They visit the ER two times more often than hearing peers. They reported in interviews that they are not comfortable and struggle with physician-patient communication and often wait till necessary to get treatment, hence the high rate of ER visits. Being uncomfortable and having negative experiences with health providers were reported. Another study reveals that deaf and hard of hearing adults have gaps in their knowledge about preventative health. When providers use medical terminology, the participants did not understand completely what it means. And when prescribed, they reported being unsure about the purposes of prescribed medications. Communication and language barriers are also experienced such as a lack of interpreters and videos or audio posted on media with no captions, meaning deaf users do not have the opportunity to benefit from the healthcare messages. The previous studies focus on the general deaf population. I wonder if deaf and hard of hearing students who attend a university and have different sets of skills related to their academics, do they have skills that impact their health literacy in different ways? So the research question states that, do deaf college students have adequate health literacy? Here at RIT NTID, there is approximately just under 1,000 deaf and hard of hearing students as of now. For this study, we recruited 54 students. The mean age is 23.2, ranging from 20 to 25 years old. About 60% of the participants are female, and half are non-Hispanic white. Only 15% of the participants have at least one deaf parent, meaning that most are not from a deaf family and their parents are hearing. We recruited participants by posting flyers and whoever was interested contacted us and were subjected to individual testing. The procedures were approved by the IRB. The subjects went through four different assessments. First, a background questionnaire, which asks about their history and their background. Second, a health questionnaire created by the team, which contains health-related questions like what their family communication looks like, their access to internet and usage, and their trust and comfort with health information. Third, the National College Health Assessment, which is a very common tool used by colleges all over the USA. The assessment contains a variety of health-related questions. Lastly, and most importantly, the newest vital sign. This is an assessment for assigning your health literacy score. Newest vital sign, abbreviated NVS, contains six questions about nutrition labels. Three different core skills are used in this assessment. First is numeracy, which means the capability to perform quantitative tasks, such as deciding the amount of doses. Second, document literacy, 
means one can analyze non-continuous texts in various formats, such as the nutrition label in this case. Third is the general reading ability. NVS has health literacy scored into three categories. Zero to one correct answers means inadequate health literacy. If you have two to four correct answers, that means you are at risk for limited health literacy. If you have five to six correct answers, that means you have adequate health literacy. But for the purpose of this study, and the ability to compare to other NVS studies, we used a version of the NVS that was translated into ASL. Meaning, in addition to reading, the participants could see a signed version of the questions you can see in the image. Also, the scores were regrouped into two categories instead of three. If the participants answered zero to three correct, then they were assigned less than adequate health literacy. If four to six answers were correct, they had adequate health literacy. Previous NVS studies had a few discoveries. One study sampled a population of 453 hearing college students and concluded that only 6.2% of hearing students had less than adequate health literacy. Dr. McKee originally created a translation of the NVS into an ASL version, and our team uses this model for our study. He found that 48% of deaf ASL users had inadequate health literacy, and the population sample was 166. We wanted to use NVS in ASL to gain insight into health literacy of deaf and hard of hearing people who attend a university. We have discovered in the newest vital sign, or NVS, that the percentage of participants who had adequate health literacy was 40.7%, and the percentage of who had less than adequate health literacy was 59.2%. The disparity is clear. Using statistics analysis and comparing NVS to the other three assessments, we found that participants who had adequate health literacy that 82% were non-Hispanic white and 18% were people of color. On the other hand, for less than adequate health literacy, 72% were people of color and only 28% were non-Hispanic white. Remember, this study has 50% of the participants being white and 50% being people of color, and keep that in mind when comparing the result. The chi-squared statistic critical value is a big number, and the significance p is less than 0.001. The result shows a significant difference between race and NVS health literacy. It is very significant. As you can see in the chart, you can see the contrast between white and people of color for health literacy. Deaf and hard of hearing college students do not represent the entire deaf community. They only represent a fraction of the general deaf population. They have different skills that are academic related and they're high achieving students attending a university. Interestingly, several studies strongly establish the link between education and health literacy. So it is surprising to see that approximately 60% experience health literacy challenges. And comparing that to hearing college students with only 6.2% having inadequate health literacy. Education is a big factor impacting health literacy, but those college students interact with plenty of other factors which are significant for health literacy such as culture, language, social, community, and others. It is recognized that an encounter with a health literacy challenge is highly probable if that individual student is a person of color. This is alarming because of known healthcare systems barriers of individuals of color, which is usually a result of social and economic conditions. 
Future deaf and hard of hearing health studies must take race and ethnicity into consideration when analyzing deaf and hard of hearing population data. The deaf community is a cultural and linguistic minority, but for a deaf student, it does not always mean it is their sole identity. Some deaf participants may have intersectionality, meaning multiple identities such as race and ethnicity, so it is important to keep that in consideration when analyzing health literacy. There is a clear health disparity among deaf and hard of hearing college students. If health disparity is seen in the deaf community at high rates, then further research is needed to find how to decrease gaps in health literacy in the deaf community. With the ability to decrease gaps, we can apply that to programs, such as secondary education programs, to provide accessible and culturally appropriate health literacy skill training for deaf and hard of hearing high school or college students. This is an urgent public health issue. We need to improve the quality of care for the general population, including deaf and hard of hearing people of different backgrounds. Thank you for watching my presentation. I want to thank my PI and the directors of the center the RIT NTID Research Center on Culture and Language. Thank you to my Deaf Health Lab team for their support in this study. And thank you for watching this. If you want to access the references or the PowerPoint presentation, you can use the QR code for access.